Okay. Let's annoy some people. If I told you there was an easy way to outperform the average returns of the property market, you'd probably be skeptical. But there's an approach that we've been using to help thousands of clients invest over more than 12 years. And it's so simple, I'm almost embarrassed to share the secret. I will though, and then I'll give you three specific locations that we're targeting for investment right now to take advantage of it. Here's how it works. If you read how the likes of Halifax and Nationwide calculate average property prices, which I don't recommend, you'll see that they calculate the growth rate of different types and sizes of property in each region of the country, and then average them out. Some will be performing well and push the average up, others will be performing poorly and pull the average back down. So to beat the average, you just need to avoid the areas that are doing badly. If you only invest in areas that are doing well, you'll naturally beat the average. Okay, I told you that sounded embarrassingly simple. Is it actually possible to do? Well, yes, because Nationwide, for example, publishes a breakdown of price changes by region. So you could just focus on those, but it's not quite that simple because you do need to understand why some areas are doing well and others are struggling and what's likely to change that in the future. So you can make investments that are not just going to be above average this month, but are going to continue to be like that for five or more years. You don't have to be a genius to do that though. And I'll show you three areas that we're steering well clear of to help you understand how this works. The first is the Southeast. The Southeast is performing poorly at the moment, but why? Well, it's because mortgage rates have gone up, which means it's become more expensive to buy the same house you would have done a year ago. Mortgage rates, of course, have gone up across the country, but the areas that are going to be affected the most are those that were already expensive to start with, which largely is the Southeast in general and London in particular. You can see that on this map where the darker areas are those where the most mortgages are financially stretched, meaning the repayments take up more of people's incomes so they might struggle if their payments increase. That in turn could lead to repossessions or at least people needing to sell and having to do so at a lower price. You can see that the Southeast is just a sea of red, so we can whip that straight out of our investment map. The second area we're avoiding is the Southwest. So the Southwest and East Anglia on the map are both looking suspiciously red. So there's a case for whipping out East Anglia as well, but I'm going to leave it for now and just eliminate the Southwest. The problem with the Southwest in particular is a lot of people from London moved there in a hurry when COVID hit. It was called the race for space and everyone was just falling over themselves to go and move out to the country. And because they were doing so in a rush and there was lots of competition, people were paying really high prices. But that trend is over now and if anything, people are moving back to cities, which is why we're seeing city centre rents rising so much. What does that mean? Well, it means you've got a lot of homes that people potentially pay over the odds for that they're now going to be offloading at a lower price. And then thirdly, there's Scotland. Scotland had been historically a strong performer. It's been doing pretty well for the last few years, but last quarter it turned negative. So is that just a blip or is it going to continue? Well, this is one that we're avoiding for political reasons. So in Scotland, there's currently a rent freeze and an eviction ban, which is supposed to be temporary, but now they're talking about making rent controls permanent. But apparently that doesn't go far enough because in recent guidance, they're saying that landlords should consider reducing rents if the tenants just ask. So there's just too much political risk to investing in Scotland. And if landlords sell up as a result of some of this, that'll put downward pressure on property prices so we can whip this off our investment map too. So by removing the areas that are likely to perform below average, we're automatically winning. We're now above average by default, but we can do even better than that by zooming in even further on areas that we believe are going to do particularly well. So here are three cities that we're targeting for investment right now. First up is Leeds. Now Leeds has been growing strongly for years, but despite that, prices are still relatively low and affordable given everything that Leeds has got going for it. And there are also specific signs that this is going to continue. So Leeds has been leading the way in fintech and a new government-backed fintech hub has recently opened in the city, which is going to cement its position. There are also over 30 national and local banks with offices in the area and Leeds has got the fastest growing legal sector in the UK. So these are all growing high wage industries, which is going to support demand for property in the city and should set the prices and rents up. Next is Birmingham, which again has been a strong performer for several years, but will it continue? Well, yes, it should. First, there's all the regeneration in the city, which is massive. It's been going on for a long time, but there's still a lot further to go. Birmingham's also got a higher proportion of graduates than any other major city, and it's the youngest city in terms of demographics. So that's going to attract more employers to the area. And as those young people progress in their careers, it's going to push average wages up, which again supports price growth and rental growth. 
Thirdly, there's Newcastle, which is a good one if you want to be a little bit earlier. Newcastle is earlier on in the property cycle and it hasn't had its run of growth yet. That means that it's very cheap. The average property price in the city centre is £148,000, which is basically half the national average. Up until this year, we considered Newcastle a bit too early, but now the signs are there that growth is going to start kicking in. For a start, there's a £1.5 billion pre-generation programme, which is pretty huge. And also institutional investors are starting to move in, including LNG, who are building two residential towers in the city. They only invest in areas where they believe that rental potential is strong and growing and where they're going to be able to charge premium rents. So the fact that they've decided that now is the time to invest in Newcastle, we're taking it as a really positive sign. So those are the broad areas that have our interest. But the next step is to zoom in on specific areas that have proven investment potential that most people have never heard of. So next, continue watching this video where I share an easy method that you can use to uncover these areas in less than five minutes without leaving your desk.